official reports of alien craft suddenly retracted. UFO investigations designed to spread disinformation. Government whistleblowers forced to conceal their identities. Over the years, Ancient Aliens has investigated the long history of government attempts to cover up the truth about the extraterrestrial presence on planet Earth. And now we're going to take a look at what I consider to be the most compelling and revealing examples. In England's southwest county of Wiltshire stands Rudlow Manor. On the surface, it appears to be nothing more than a quaint English manor house. But deep beneath this structure lie an astounding 2.2 million square feet of vast caverns divided into many smaller chambers. For years, it was home to a group called the Provost and Security Services. They're kind of like the James Bonds of the British Royal Air Force. But back in the 1990s, and certainly going back to the 1950s, the Provost and Security Services were heavily involved in UFO investigations. In 2007, the Ministry of Defense announced that Rudlow Manor was no longer in use by the military. But if that's true, why are the grounds surrounded by chain link fences, monitored by security cameras, and even protected by guard dogs? To find the answers, in January of 2017, ancient astronaut theorist Giorgio Suclos traveled to the protected boundaries of Rudlow Manor. There it is. Joining him in his search for the truth was Nick Pope. Wow. We're here. During your time at the MOD, what did you learn about this place or any type of uh, UFO cases that may have happened around this area? Well, this whole area is rich in UFO sightings. UFO sightings were investigated by staff based here at Rudlow Manor, but for years, we, we denied it. We told Parliament, the media and the public that these things were of no interest, that Rudlow Manor had no involvement in this, and yet when the files were declassified, it turned out that people were right. Right here. Right here. Okay. And, and so this, this building really was at the heart of Britain's secret UFO research, and particularly the underground facilities below us. And the UFO community alleges that that's where the UK keeps its alien hardware. Crashed UFOs, all sorts of secrets and research and investigation and projects went on from uh, this particular facility. So then this was basically considered or is considered the UK's Area 51. Absolutely right. Even rumors of uh, alien bodies. Alien bodies? Could the ultimate proof of government contact with extraterrestrials be hidden in the tunnels right beneath Nick and Giorgio's feet? While Rudlow Manor is completely inaccessible, another entrance to the underground facilities is found two miles away at the equally secretive installation known as the Corsham Computer Center, or CCC. Despite the fact that it too is not open to the public, ancient astronaut theorist Giorgio Sukulos asked Nick Pope to take him to the CCC for a first-hand look at the installation. All right. Good luck. Thank you very much. As a former employee of the Ministry of Defense, Nick did not feel it was appropriate for him to approach the facility himself without clearance. I'll see you later, Nick. Yes. Take care. Here we are, the CCC. And the lights are on. And uh, just like uh, Nick explained, it's got barbed wire, it is fenced down, it's impenetrable. Clearly this entrance goes underground. Within minutes of Giorgio's arrival at the security gate, the crew is met by a military police unit. Can I ask the million dollar question? What are you doing down here? Unfortunately, 
The situation ends with filming being halted. But why? Is it possible, as ancient astronaut theorists suggest, that Rudlow Manor is not only used for secret government UFO investigations, but is housing extraterrestrial technology and even alien bodies? Whatever's going on down there, it's big. Still to this day, thousands of people work there, and yet you can't get any real information about what they're doing. It's absolutely off limits. In July of 1947, an unidentified flying object crashed to Earth in the desert just outside Roswell, New Mexico. It is today the most famous UFO event on record, in part because it was the Army itself that reported the craft as a flying disc. July 8th and 9th, the newspaper headlines, Army captures flying disc outside of Roswell. How did the newspaper get that story? Walter Hout. He was the official public information officer at the Roswell 509th, who gave the story to the newspaper. But the military quickly walked back its story. Within days, the mysterious Roswell UFO was given an earthly origin, when the government claimed that the downed craft was merely a weather balloon. Major Jesse Marcel, the head intelligence officer at Roswell Army Airfield, traveled to Fort Worth, Texas, where the debris recovered from the Roswell crash site. He and Brigadier General Roger Ramey, head of the 8th Air Force, were scheduled to present their findings to the media. It came out that President Truman sent orders to General Ramey, hold up something, get some Reynolds wrap out of, off, off the fish in your freezer and hold it up and say, that's what you found, not a disc, which is exactly what they did. And the reporters basically just turned around and went home. For UFO researchers, evidence that the actual wreckage from Roswell was indeed replaced with a weather balloon can be found within the notorious photograph, along with clues as to what was being hidden from the public. When General Roger Ramey was uh, posing for photographs with Jesse Marcel in the aftermath of all of this, you can see him very clearly holding a piece of paper. General Ramey had a document in his hands, the so-called Ramey Memo, Modern forensic document analysis and photographic enhancement has enabled some researchers to zoom in on this and to clarify at least some portions of the text. What it tells us is astounding. Some of the phrases in the memo are victims of the wreck and disc which we will ship. So clearly something more than just a weather balloon was involved here, and the memo might just be the smoking gun. We actually have evidence of an FBI memo that made such a statement, that what was recovered was being brought to Wright Field for analysis. Well, you're not going to bring balloon parts to Wright Field for analysis. That's not going to happen. Is it possible that Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio, is still housing the remains of the object recovered from the New Mexico desert more than 70 years ago. And if so, could they be using the debris to try and recreate extraterrestrial technology? Even now, in the last few years, there have been important UFO sightings around Dayton. And witnesses uh, in that area are looking out over Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, and even in broad daylight, seeing unusual craft hovering over the base. This is a very distinct possibility that's supported by the fact that no jets are released when these UFOs appear. It's almost as if they know what they are. Maybe it's because it's one of our own reverse-engineered craft. Malmstrom Air Force Base, Montana, March 16th. 1967. Before dawn, sentries and maintenance crews near the base's nuclear missile silos see mysterious lights flying back and forth across the sky. These lights are so bright that the men on the ground can't identify what they are. But when one of them takes up a position just outside the base's security fence, a sentry calls a superior to report a UFO. One of the missiles suddenly went offline, and then another and another. 
until the whole flight of missiles was somehow mysteriously deactivated. This is highly disturbing because it suggests in the event that UFOs one day become hostile, our entire atomic arsenal may become completely inoperable. In June 2019, Giorgio Tsoukalos arranged to meet up with one of the men who was stationed at Malmstrom on the night of this historic UFO event, retired Air Force Missile Launch Officer Robert Salas. While Malmstrom was deactivated at the end of the Cold War, a nearly identical Minuteman missile facility in South Dakota is still accessible to the public. Let's go in here. Thank you very much. So Robert invited Giorgio there to walk him through exactly what he experienced in 1967. Tell me what happened that night. I got a phone call from the topside guard. He's screaming into the phone. I mean, he's really frightened. And he said, I've got all the guards out here, weapons drawn. And we see this gigantic red-orange object, oval-shaped, hovering above the front gate. And all of a sudden, we get klaxons, horns. Both look over at the control panel here. And boom, 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 one right after the other. All no-go. I mean, it has to be incredibly startling and disconcerting that someone else with higher technology is able to disable our missiles. Exactly, and that's how I've come to the conclusion that these were extraterrestrial objects, or they were constructed off Earth, mm -hmm. because we had nothing that could do anything like this, either then or now. And then was there a debriefing, or was there a discussion? We were ordered to our squadron commander's office, and then the guy next to him, he shoved this paper in our faces, sign here. I said, what is this? He said, this is a non-disclosure statement about the incident. You are never to speak about it to anybody. So you were given an order. We were ordered to sign it, yeah. And that was it. Uh, I could not speak about this, and I didn't speak about this to anyone for uh, about 27 years. Military officials have never provided an explanation for the missile shutdown. Was it caused by extraterrestrials? Ancient astronaut theorists say yes, but suggest that we may never know the full story. Because for 50 years, the United States military has covered it up.